Hey, welcome to the In Between Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about anything and everything. This is your host, Haido, and today is a special episode for me because today is May the 4th, so May the 4th be with you. This whole episode is dedicated to Star Wars for Star Wars fans, but if you're not a Star Wars fan, we will try to include you. We're going to convince you to watch the movies because, you know, some of you haven't watched it because you haven't, you know, seen Star Wars like we do, but hopefully after this podcast, if you haven't seen Star Wars, you're going to be convinced. And today with me, I have two of my bestest friends in the world joining me for this conversation, my friend Eddie and my friend Evie. So get ready. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. Hey, Eddie, how are you doing, my man? It's just, this has been a long time coming to have you in the podcast. And same with you, Evie. So I'm super thrilled to have you guys here. So, Eddie, how about you give us a few words, introduce yourself, let the world know who you are, and maybe they can love you like I love you. Oh, man, that's so <laughs> sweet. Yes. Well, you guys, my name is Eddie Canales. I uh, moved here to Texas from California last year ago. I came here with my wife, and now uh, we're having a little baby boy here. So today was my first day at paternity leave, and so I'm finally going to have a chance to spend time with him. But more importantly, today, May the 4th, we're going to go and watch Star Wars. So Ooh. you probably won't know what's going on, but he's going to be fascinated with the lasers and the fighters, and everything was going to be amazing. So I just can't wait. As he grows up, he'll be able to love Star Wars as much as I do. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. Let's go. Let's talk about Star Wars all day. Let's go. Ooh. So, Evie, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, my friends call me Evie, but my name's Evelyn Saucedo. Um, I live in Lancaster, California. If you guys know, it's a little desert. Shout out to out Lancaster. Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, well, I came um, to know Star Wars through my friends. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but that's sure. why I'm here, because I... Um, just want to, you know, converse with my friends about Star Wars and, you know, learn some more things, too, because they're very knowledgeable about it. So I'm just excited to be here with you guys. And yeah, just to be in the podcast. And let's let's do this. <laughs> so Woo! this episode is going to be filled with facts. It's going to be filled with opinions because you know, let's 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 be honest, Eddie and Evie, we all have different opinions about star wars movies i mean even though we all love the franchise but we all have different opinions but there's gonna be facts and opinions but also we have a couple games we have one game actually that we're gonna be playing throughout the whole podcast so stay tuned for that and we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep points to see who knows more star wars or who knows their star wars better there's no right or wrong answer i mean come on but well there is a right th- there answer, is a right but answer but we're gonna do our best we're gonna yeah. do our best <laughs> so Eddie and I like to compete, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this. One of the first times I ever hung out with Eddie and Evie, she kicked our butts at Mario Kart. You remember that? You remember uh, that? I that try was not to so. Remember. He tries not to remember because he's a sore loser, but she kicked our butts really bad. She tells us that she's not a gamer and everything. And so, like, oh, here, get some controller. And then we give her the controller, and she's just like, all over that. I was like, you are a gamer, aren't you? You are yeah. a gamer, yeah. So, I mean, so. If you haven't told, if you can tell by now, but we are three of the bestest friends and we know each other very well. And so Star Wars is a big thing for us and we celebrate May the 4th. And this is the reason for this podcast. We're going to spend all day watching the movies, probably watching some of the Mandalorian and just remembering Star Wars because that's what we do because we have no lives. But it's okay. Star Wars is amazing. So I want to start off this conversation with you guys and let's, let's start here. Um, and whoever wants to take it first, how did your Star Wars journey begin? Um, well, I can start. Um, the whole Star Wars thing, I actually did not know what was Star Wars. Um, I I remember maybe I was like maybe nine, eight years old. Um, for and this probably will show my age. Um, back in the day, kids. There was <laughs> libraries out there and you would have a library card and not only you, you know, rent out books out there or take out books, but you also can take out VHS tapes. So it was a type of routine or tradition for me and my brother to go to the library every weekend. And we basically, you know, we didn't have the money to go to Blockbuster or anything like that. No, we just go to the library and we just rent out a, a tape. And so I remember we were looking through all this stuff and then we saw this one called Star Wars. Um, it just looked interesting. The cover looked interesting enough for us. And we, I remember we didn't even 
uh, rented them out at, in the right order, which you guys will know later on what that means. And we just grabbed, I believe it was the Empire Stripes back. And, uh, and we watched it and we just got so drawn into it with storyline of, of uh, good and bad and, and dark side and, 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 uh, and the force and, and all these characters that just had so much depth to it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how it all started. My brother was kind of the one that kind of just ran off with it first, bought a couple of the books and everything. And then, uh, I just, you know, it was probably a little late bloomer, but ever since then I jumped on board. I, I just couldn't stop. I just loved the whole idea of Star Wars. I related to the characters. I related to a lot of things. Uh, I saw myself in a lot of these characters, and uh, it, it was just awesome. So I, at the age of nine, I started Star Wars, and then to this day, we're still knee dip, knee deep on Star Wars, on what the franchise is going with. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I love it. And uh, it's funny you mentioned knee deep because. Somehow in all of our conversations, we have to talk about Star Wars. And, you know, as Eddie yeah. mentioned, Eddie lives in Texas and I'm in Las Vegas. We talk every week, at least twice or at least once a week. But we always manage to talk about Star Wars because that's just how big Star Wars is for us. And I'll, I'll go from here. But it was kind of similar the way that I, I came to the franchise. Um, One of my uncles had a whole... You know, back in the day, kids, you know, we didn't have DVDs or digital movies. So my uncle had a drawer filled with VHS. And somewhere in there, he was like, hey, you know, take some of the movies. I don't even need them anymore. And he gave me, especially this one about ships and the galaxy. I don't get it. So just take it. And it was Empire Strikes Back. And so I took it home. I watched it. I fell in love with Star Wars right there and then. And ever since then... I read some of the books, I read some of the comics, and I have been devoted to the franchise since then. And you know, ah, man, I'm a big the man. Uh, you know, I'm a big Mando fan now that we have that. You know, so many great things yep. coming out of that. Not a huge fan of the latest movies, but definitely, definitely, definitely a fan of the originals. Like you should be if you are a Star Wars fan. And you know, the prequels. The prequels we'll get to that in a bit but that's how i came to the franchise so evie how did you how did you come to know the, the franchise how did you come to star wars how did your your journey began um i gotta take it back to when you know when you're little and you watch movies that you don't really watch them <laughs> that was me i remember now that i watch it i remember scenes from the movie but i didn't really know what star wars was if you could say until I was an adult, of course, until I, you know, got to know you guys, actually. Before that, I didn't really know what it was. Um, I think that um, I got to talking with Haido one time, and he was all excited about The Mandalorian. And he's like, oh my gosh, you don't know what Star Wars is? And when, you know, a Star Wars means, meets a person that has never really watched it like that, they're like, oh my gosh, you have to watch it, you know? And these two guys right here, if they can introduce you to something, they will convince you to watch it or to do anything, you know? Um, so that's how it started with me, you know? Um, Heidel was like, you have to watch them. And he told me to watch them in chronological order because he's like, for you to understand it. And of course, for me, I know myself, for me to understand it, I had to watch it in that way. And then I remember mentioning it to um, Eddie, I think it was when I went over for a Friendsgiving. I was like, hey, I'm watching like Star Wars. And he's like, what? And he's like, you have to watch it in this order. And I'm like, hey, I don't tell me to watch yes, it in this I'm order. like, when you said chronological order, I'm like, that's not, no. That, no okay, that's we'll, not good. We'll, we'll get to that right now. <laughs> but <laughs> go, keep going. Keep... Yeah, so there's just okay. There's a matter of opinions here on, on how you should on how you should watch Star Wars. There's a lot of people, and, and this is why I introduce people to the prequels first, just so that they know a little bit of the basis of the characters. I have found from other people that I've introduced. Now, maybe that's not your experience, Eddie, and I agree with the way you watch the movies, but this is just the way that some people understand it better. If they watch the prequels and they know the characters. 
it's easier for them to go back and watch a movie from the 80s. See, the problem is that Hollywood has a customer, you know, has made us think that movies are supposed to be one way. And sometimes we can go back and enjoy classics. I'm a big classic guy. So when it comes to music, TV shows, I mean, you know, I, I like anything that's the classics. But there's a lot of people that don't. So I usually tell people, look, if, if you're going to watch Star Wars, start here. Don't pay too much attention. Just go with it and then get to the original. That's the meaty part of it. So um, the reason why I do that is because recently some of the new movies, they've kind of gapped, right? The That thing where, oh, you're a fan that you don't know anything about Star Wars. Well, we'll give you these movies with new characters so that you can relate. But still then, there's some aspects of the new movies that you have to go back and watch the old movies to understand. Yeah. But I know, oh, Eddie. Definitely. So, and like I said, this is a matter of opinion. Everyone has their way of watching it. So, Eddie, tell us about your way. Tell us about your okay. way of watching the, the movies. The, uh, the right way, guys. It's a matter um, of no, opinion. I... It's a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I get the, for me personally, I get the whole, the whole idea of starting from the front. The original way is the best way only because you get to actually enjoy like get the root of the storyline like you said the meaty part of it now i understand how a couple people at least more the younger generation they would rather watch the first movies because the in in a generation of where visual effects has increased such a crazy way which we'll talk later on about how star wars revolutionized uh special effects but the idea that you know some of the younger generation, they watch episode four, five, six, and they're like, this looks super old. Like they, they don't engage that well. So you kind of take them through the first generation, but then by the time they get to the four, five, six, they're like, ah, oh, man, I rather wish they had the better graphics like the first three they had. So I've had those experiences where people have also made those comments. I'm like, it's best to just do four, five, six, then go one, two, three, kind of the way they came out. Uh, just to re- truly get, because honestly, the best storyline it is four, five, six. Yeah. Definitely. So if people give up on if people give up on episode one or episode two, they're not going to be able to enjoy the amazing uh, storytelling that you see in episodes four, five, and six. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the other ones. So seven, eight, nine. So maybe going on, whenever we meet somebody that hasn't seen Star Wars, maybe we should, you know, just point out both storylines depending on the person's preference, because. I, I will say this. There's a lot of people that if you give them four, five, and six, they're not going to be able to keep up with the story because they're going to be like, what, what's up with this character? It's like, how am I supposed to relate to this character? Who is this character, right? Um, when you show them the first three movies, it's a little easier to know who Obi-Wan Kenobi is or who Yoda is. So I, I, that's the reason why I do it this way. But honestly, the way is watching four, five, and six. I mean, definitely that is the way. But I think we got to go back to this problem. The newer generations, they can't keep up with stories. And I think technology has done that to them. They can't keep up with storylines. They're just like, who is this person? Why should I care? And why should I watch a movie from the 80s? Right? So it's like, yeah. And you know what's crazy is that there's even, uh, you go online and you actually see there's a lot more different variations of these orders. And, you know, so I always encourage you to go four, five, six, one, two, three, and then do the other ones. But there's other ones that, like, if you want to see Darth Vader's perspective, you literally only, the order that they give you is like one, then it's three, four, five, then go like, it's it's a weird. So there's different variations, but you should always, you know, try to try to go with the original route and and i i feel like i personally believe you'll you'll be able to enjoy the storyline even deeper now i i i love the fact that evelyn you know is one of the reasons why i want i I like for her to be in this podcast but this is because like i said you and you me and heider like we we kind of started with this we we this was our childhood growing up and and so our we have a lot of memories built in this so you know evelyn is the perfect example of that person that you bump into and be like you never watched star wars oh my gosh like we got to do something about that we gotta we gotta we gotta watch it we gotta you know here's my disney plus account password in <laughs> and I watch did. it you know <laughs> yeah you see there you go that's what i did so i was like, like you haven't seen it here's the- here's disney here's my disney uh, plus account go watch it and i even made her a whole account yes. because like you have yeah. to watch it and what's crazy is that it, it still boggles my mind that there's certain people that have not watched it. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta let them know about this, you know? And, but so I, uh, 
I, I really enjoy the fact that we have these different perspectives, you know, and I know that my child whose name is Ezra is also, if you guys know, Ezra is also a character from Star Wars. It's also a biblical name, which we, we chose it for that, but we <laughs> plugged it, I plugged it in there in the back. It's like, oh, you know, Ezra is also a Jedi. So, uh, you know, and we, we even, we even had this whole uh, baby shot, uh, gender reveal with, with the lightsaber and everything. It's, it's, so I can't wait to be able to experience this with Ezra himself and be able to like him, him asking me questions and be able to kind of like, this is the way, this, this is, and which this is, is also a Mandalorian. This, this Mandalorian. is Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. This um, is the way. I honestly think that, okay, there is, it boggles my mind, like you said, that people haven't seen Star Wars, especially because so many things from Star Wars is so mainstream now. Like, oh, yeah. And everybody, almost everybody knows the uh, look, I'm your father joke without having seen Star Wars. They know that. You know, like shows have done that, that have, you know, they reference Star Wars. Um, I think even Marvel has referenced Star Wars. Like, I think Spider Man, right? Spider Man 2 referenced Marvel. It's Marvel, I mean, sorry, Star Wars. Sorry. Woo! What about a messed up here? Star Wars is so mainstream. Everybody yep. knows what a lightsaber is without you having seen Star Wars. You know what a lightsaber is, which I think Eddie has one with us present. Light it up, light it up. There you go. See? So everyone knows what a lightsaber is. I'm pretty sure people go to Disney, get on a Star Wars ride, without even realizing they've never seen Star Wars. But Star Wars is there. So maybe if y'all just commit a little bit and watch the movies, <laughs> it would make a big difference. So that brings yeah. me to this question. What did uh, what first impression did you have of the franchise? Um, I, I will say this for myself. I was such a big nerd, not only comics, but also science. And just watching stuff with outer space stuff fascinates me. Anything that has to do with galaxies, anything that has to do with uh, spaceships, I, I am fascinated by those things. Um, you know, reading or, or watching a movie or reading a story about a galaxy far, far away with creatures that we've never seen because it's in a galaxy far, far away. Um, spaceships, lightsabers, lasers, you know, like all this stuff that Star Wars has. It, it just it just got me as a, as a person, as a, as a little kid. And I, I think I was eight or nine. When, when I first stumbled into this. And so, all it was like all my nerd things that I was interested in. Stars, space, galaxy, fighting, action. It, it was all compact together. And it was Star Wars. So, my I, dude, I, my first impression, I love this. I live for this now. You know, um, I remember, I don't know if you ever had a plastic lightsaber, Eddie, when you were growing up. Remember these used to oh, sell yeah. them at Walmart? And you had the plastic lightsaber. I would go outside and, and, and duel with my friends from the neighborhood because that's what you did because Star Wars was so big. Mm -hmm. that, and that was my first oh, impression. Yeah. Like, you no, know, I've made so much me childhood memories because of Star Wars. And it's, and it's the best thing. Yeah, my impression um, with Star Wars, like I said earlier when I first introduced, it was it's really uh, captivating. Um, like, I grew up with, you know, watching power rangers watching power rangers uh um and so the idea of crime fighting uh using powers using swords using laser guns um that was all something that i was really into um and then just i don't know just the, the characters themselves uh the the darth vader which is an iconic villain yeah. uh just the look that he had um within with as in you know could be intimidating it you know it, it really just speaks to any little kid that sees themselves in luke skywalker and sees this kid that basically is trying to figure himself out in this world and trying to have an answer as far as you know what is his purpose is and and the idea that there's something out there that's basically gonna bring some sort of evil or some sort of cause or danger to a uh, certain people uh, you see princess leia you know, reaching out like a, a, a damsel in distress, you know, type of person and like, a, you know, telling Obi-Wan, I need your help. Uh, just that, you know, that, that 
desire to be wanting to be a hero. I think that's one of the biggest things why a lot of kids look up to um, superheroes like Spider-Man, Batman, uh, you know, like even even wrestler. Like I grew up with wrestling as well. So yes. every every kid's desire is to be able to be help some way, somehow be a hero to some way. That's why there's not only not only superheroes, but even like uh, firefighters, policemen, um, teachers. Those are people that kids see as heroes. And, and even parents, there's certain parents that their kids look up to their parents and be like, man, I, I want to be like my, my dad. I want to be like my mom. Like they, they're so helpful. They're so, they, 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 they give to the people, give community. I want to, I want to reflect that. I want to mimic that. And so Luke Skywalker was that to me, Luke Skywalker was, you know. Hey, sorry about the technical technical difficulties, but this is the in-between podcast where anything can happen. So continuing the conversation with Eddie, he was talking about yeah. having a hero and everybody meeting a hero, and this was his impression of Star Wars. Yeah, your speech already sounded like technical difficulties right there. I was <laughs> I trying know. to talk about it. So <laughs> no, but what's it called? Yeah, no, yeah. We're basically we're talking about impressions about this whole thing, uh, you know how I just love this the idea of a hero and so how kids basically like any childhood kid wants to be a hero uh, that we look up to people like superheroes we look up to people like uh, like wrestlers and fighter fighters police officers teachers our parents you know we all look up to somebody so the idea of us seeing Luke Skywalker trying to find out his purpose and to try to help out Princess Leia and and trying to uh, go against this crazy villain called Darth Vader uh it, it it basically that that pulled my heartstrings and wanted to be part of that storyline and I related to Luke Skywalker so that's uh, one of the main reasons why I, I uh, fell in love with the franchise what was your impression of Star Wars Evie well I think um Eddie kind of mentioned a little bit like growing up with my brothers I had two older brothers kind of like you guys um and they kind of you know were rough and they liked power rangers you know i remember us playing with lifesavers and not really knowing what star wars was you know <laughs> like we fought yeah. these things we did all these things she's like what is had... this game <laughs> <laughs> it was, i just thought it was cool because hey like i wanted to hang out with my brothers you know so um that you know when i started watching star wars that those memories came back right and then just like the fighting scenes, I was like, oh my gosh, so fascinated by them. You know, being a girl growing up with two brothers, you know, you just, you know, had to be tough or had to like, you know, um, be like them. And so yeah, just seeing Star Wars now as an adult, it was just something that was just, wow, like these fight scenes are amazing. Um, I remember Anakin's race with the pod racing and I just thought that was the coolest thing. And that was one of my, you know, um, more memorable things when I watched it as a kid and watching it again, I was like, hey, I remember him. I remember the pod racing. And I just thought that was the coolest thing, you know, growing up playing with these toys and these things, not knowing what they were. And now finally, like knowing what they were. Um, so that was just like something that was so amazing. So when I was watching it, I was so excited by, you know, just everything, the lifesavers, because um, it was something different. You know, we saw swords growing up. We saw like all these different like fighting you know toys and everything like i remember wrestling with my brothers like with the boxing you know um, gloves and everything but like lifesavers were just now like a cool thing you know like with um yep. star wars so yeah just watching it now it's just um seeing the storylines of everyone and um of course like when ray was introduced i just loved it because i'm like this powerful yeah and as a Jedi, of course, there was other um, woman Jedi, but just seeing her as the lead, I guess, um, compared to the yeah. other one, just something like so new, you know, and it was just something I loved and I could relate a lot to her um, and, you know, trying to keep up with like the male Jedi, you know, and trying to find out who she was and just in this whole universe. Um, I think I just was intrigued by that a lot. Because um, I think just watching Star Wars back to back to back and then because you guys, you guys had like a whole transition, you know, from when you were little kids, you guys watched, you know, um, it like in a span of like years, you know, I watched it yep. in a span of less than a couple of months. So <laughs> um, it was just amazing. And the impression was different because I got to see that so quickly, like 
a woman Jedi. So I just thought that was really cool. And there's just so many other things, but um, I'll leave it with that. That was just one of the things that really like, you know, stood out to me. Um, and I love Ray. I just really love her. <laughs> yeah, Ray so, Ray's awesome. With that being said, let's get ready for a little game. All right. So Evie has prepared some questions for us, uh, some trivia questions. Um, I'm kind of so, nervous about this. Yeah, dude, me too. Cause I, we're either this is gonna be really good or it's gonna be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. I'm on like no sleep. I'm trying to finish some finals for school. So forgive uh. me if I don't answer any questions. That's my excuse. <laughs> and um, Eddie is a dad. And, uh, a brand new dad, so that's his excuse. So <laughs> we don't remember things. Yes. So Evie. Two months old. Let's do this. Here is Star Wars trivia questions. Awesome. Eddie? You're thinking cats on. Oh, she's okay. Okay. I'm <laughs> okay. I'm gonna take it easy on you guys this first round. And then I'll get, you know, a little bit more difficult ones later on. So I think this one, you guys have to get it. If you guys don't, then Oh my gosh! If if, uh, if we don't get these questions, our whole life is a lie. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay, okay shoot. Here's this question. Um, here we go. Who is the famous mentor of Luke Skywalker? Oh. <laughs> Are you scared to answer, Eddie? <laughs> no, I'm. I thought. I don't know. It was, I don't know. We're racing for this. Okay, so we're like, racing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, whoever. Okay, okay. Famous oh. mentor of Luke Skywalker. That's Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, that's easy. It's Obi Wan. There you go. Woo! All right. So, okay, we survived the first one. We survived the first one. All right. Your next question, Evie. Next one. Okay. True or false? There can only be two Sith Lords at one time. True. I believe that is true. That's why based on yeah, all the other movies, I see, yeah. And based on the books, the rule of two. Yes. Okay, yeah. you guys are good running. <laughs> all right. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. One more question for this segment. One more question. Okay. So we love lightsabers. So what color is Mace Windu's lightsaber? And I'll make this a multiple choice question. A, black, B, purple, C, blue, and D, green. Purple, B. Yes, it is purple. And I actually would like to add a little Star nugget. Wars fact about this, guys, a little nugget. Purple is the reason why it was purple is because uh, Samuel L. Jackson personally requested yep. to have it purple. Um, and not only that, but his lightsaber was also engraved with his famous, let's just say, catchphrase bad word. <laughs> if you guys know which one it is. You don't want to say it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to say it. But do you, but know the reason, it yes. you know the reason why he wanted his, his lightsaber to be purple besides, besides uh, him wanting it to be purple? The real, like the actual reason, is because when they were yeah. shooting that scene in uh, Clone Wars, um, when they're in that, uh, when they're in that pit, episode, in that stadium, episode two, ep um, they were um, there was a whole bunch of green and blue, and so when they were doing production, he was like, "I'm not gonna see myself in that," so he's like, "Make my lightsaber purple so I can see myself in screen and I know where I am." So it's Samuel L. Jackson. They did. They did it for him. So honestly, yeah, he requested it, but that was the reason why. Because he was like, I want to find myself in this movie. I want to know where I am because if it's my life server is blue or green, I'm not going to see myself. So <laughs> Mace Windu got, you know, his 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 lightsaber to be purple because of Samuel L. Jackson and has become iconic. Honestly, I wanted the, the purple lightsaber when I was a kid and I could never find it. It was always sold out at Walmart. Man. Uh, here's another little nugget since you brought up uh, Attack of the Clones where Mace Window basically wanted to be in that battle fight. Did you guys know that uh, the back in the day pops, uh, pop star band in sync also a couple of the characters made a cameo in part of that battle scene. 
Oh, really? um, yep. Um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Joe Lucas's daughter was a huge uh, in sync fan, and so requested to have them uh, be in cameo. Justin Timberlake and I believe Lance Bass uh, did not want to be a part of that, but all the other in sync uh, characters, uh, I mean bandmates, did, and then uh, they actually had a scene as a cameo fighting, but. It was later cut, so you never actually saw them do it. Oh. But uh, yeah, they were technically as a cameo. They were part of the because uh, also at that time that this movie came out, In Sync was huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, it was like the pop uh, music era. So yeah. So maybe that's where we got all the uh, the hype now for the later movies to have famous people as clones, right? They had uh, Daniel Craig as a clone. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I think it was an episode oh, yeah, yeah. episode eight. I, th- I believe it was. And mm-hmm. I believe the the prince, the both prince from from England, they were both cameo too. To, they were they were both clones. I don't know if you guys knew that too. So ah, oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah. You guys didn't know. So let's let's move on. Uh, our next question here is, and this is gonna be big. So so I'm trying to move into this one. Who is your favorite character from Star Wars? And this is this is big because if. If you're a Star Wars fan, you might have a couple, but we're talking about ultimately the, your number one. Yeah. If you had to choose one of them, who would it be? I'll let you guys go first. I'm still trying to figure this one out because this Man. one's definitely a tough one. I'll just go off of what I said, the you know, before this, the question before, where um, I loved Ray, you know, as you know, a character. She, she just came in and she just had this strong, you know um character you know and just trying to find out who she was um in this world you know uh, where it was like mainly led by men you know so it's just amazing um i love her but when i think of star wars i think of r2d2 i just okay. love him because when i started watching like you know on the star wars franchise like he always stood out to me and I love his little, you know, sound that he makes. It's just like iconic, you know, and I just really love him. And I just love him because he he's always there to help, you know, he's always a character that helps. Um, first he was with Padme and then he was a droid for Anakin and Luke. And I just love, you know, um, his, I guess, role in the franchise or in the storyline of Star Wars. And he's just a big character, you know, and he's in a lot of the movies. Um, yeah, I would, I'd go. Yeah. With you know, I, I totally forgot about R2-D2. Um, and uh, yeah, he is such an iconic character. Here's a little Star Wars fact about R2-D2. Uh, <clears throat> R2-D2 in the original uh, writing for R2-D2, R2-D2 actually was able to say words kind of like c-3po so c-3po was your kind of like comic annoying relief uh annoying comic relief and so but r2d2 was actually written to be a very uh jerk to c-3po yeah. um yeah he had, he had actually had some lines like kind of insulting c-3po or like uh but later on was 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 changed um so so yeah r2d2 basically stop becoming having in his own voice but actually end up having voice uh little sounds as his voice um the 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 creator of these sounds for r2d2 also spoke out about um the sounds that he made was a lot of it was done through a, kind of his little synthesizer type of a uh, uh keyboard but a lot of it was actually recordings of himself uh, saying a couple words but but more uh saying baby sounds like goo goo gaga and all these baby sounds and then kind of synthesized through yeah. oh, through audio converters and, and to make those sounds as R2D2. So that's why you, you kind of hear these like expressions of yeah. sounds uh, when he's sad, when he's happy, when he's angry. So that yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Good to know, yeah. That is, wow. yeah, that, that's a really good nugget because I don't think a lot of people know that. No. And you can tell like when him and C, C3PO are like having, I guess, their conversation. You can kind of sense that that he's kind of you know talking back to him in a way, but we don't know what he's saying. Um, but yeah, I always love their I love their relationship and they're just back and forth. It's awesome. Yeah, and for those who don't know already, 
for the original R two D two, there was a living person inside. Yeah. Uh, yep. R2-D2. So it was not just robotics. It, there's actually uh, someone inside as yeah. well uh, creating that uh, uh, imagery. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. R2-D2, uh, Ray, awesome characters. For me, I I want to see Luke Skywalker. I really do. Like I, I feel like he's right there. Um, and for, for many reasons, like I said, the hero. The hero person. Uh, I, I love how Man- Mandalorian brought up Luke Skywalker and finally gave us the Luke that we wanted, that that awesome, super powerful one. It was, oh my, you cry, and I know that you spoke about it in your last podcast, but um, as much as I love and uh, Luke Skywalker, I want to, my heart pulls for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Man. The reason why, because, <laughs> you know, it, you know, growing up, I always had the blue lightsaber. Like, yeah. as much as I wanted the green one, I wanted the blue lightsaber because of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I just... I, I don't know. I just really draw a lot to the mentorship type, um, you know, I, and as well as because I think also uh, I believe that I have a ministry for mentorship as well. And so when I when I see somebody like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ben Kenobi in, in episode four, um, I relate to him a lot because I, 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 I want to be that mentor to a lot of people, a lot of younger kids, a lot of younger teens. And so um, the patience that you see in Obi-Wan. You know, when when you, you can see how Lucas gets impatient with with things and trying to learn how to figure out the force. And Ben is just so like, you'll get it, you know, yeah. and, and and so I, I really love uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi about that. And then when you see the prequels, you see his storyline, how he grows up and how he also looked up to Qui-Gon Jinn and, and all those things, those loyalty that that I see in Obi-Wan, um, it just characteristics of 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 someone who I would admire if, yeah. if I had someone like that, you know, mentoring me. So yeah, that would be my, my favorite character. You stole it from me. You stole oh. everything word for word because I always, when I, when I would play star Wars as a kid, I would choose Obi-Wan. I would always choose Obi-Wan because of those same reasons, the way he sacrificed himself for the greater good, the way he, he provided wisdom and then watching the prequel, seeing him, you know, learn and then give back, you know, like, you know, probably if I want to give props to the prequels and, and hype them up a bit, which I shouldn't, but going from episode one to two, you see the growth and, 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 and Obi-Wan, yeah. right? So you oh, see, yeah. you Huge. see him and, and that's in part thanks to the actor that played him, right? Ian yeah. McGregor, right? Ian, 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 Ian. Evan, Evan McGregor. Evan, there you go. So, Thanks to him, he's such a great actor. But you see the growth, like from one movie to the other. He's just like, boom! Like this whole grown-up Jedi master maturity and yeah, maturity, yeah. just like you know, doing the right thing. And then when we get to uh, Revenge of the Sith, you know, I have the higher ground. Don't do this. And like, I didn't want to do this. You were the chosen you one. You were the chosen one. And you see, like, he didn't want to kill his best friend. He didn't want to kill the person he was mentoring. And it just pains him so much. Right, it would have been another Jedi. It, they would have just, they would just, they would have just kicked them into the the flames. But no, he was like, "I'm gonna let you there. You're already dead. You're defeated." And his whole story arc is just really, really profound. Which brings me to this: um, I have to correct myself. I said that the Obi Wan Kenobi uh, TV show was coming out this year on my last podcast. Actually, it comes out next year. So I'm sorry about that. You gotta fact check and. Yeah, we have to wait a whole year for it. But from what I've heard, it's going to be amazing. And so I can't wait to see uh, this actor take the role again and give us a more profound uh, vision into the life of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So yes. that is my favorite character. And I mean, I mean, Eddie, you and I are basically the same person in some aspects. So I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised we got we got Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am here because- it pushed me to be here. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. So with that being said, are you ready? Some more trivia questions. It's that time again. It's that time again. Alrighty. Here we go, Evie. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna make this a little bit harder. I think that was the first round was a little too easy. Okay. Okay, here we go. Count Dooku. Oh, I guess it's not too hard. Count Dooku cut off Anakin's left arm true or false what i'm trying to figure out if it's his left arm or his right arm 
Yeah, me too. So that's the part that I'm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. To I I YOLO. So I'm gonna say false. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna YOLO this one. You're gonna. Agree Wait, or... I'm gonna say true. I'm gonna say true. true. One of us gotta be right. Yeah, one of us has to be right. And it Wait. is false. Yes. It does, it, does it say not left arm? It was his right arm. His right arm. I, yeah, yeah. As I, I was like, I was trying to remember. Like, ah, oh, is it? That's yeah. a that's a tricky question. That's a tricky that question yeah. because, yeah. Up our left and our right arm, so it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. If if you're one of those persons, uh, you know, people that, you know, you can't, you don't know your left and right, so that that could be, challenging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question, Evie. Hit us. Hit us. Hit us. Hmm. Who is the bounty hunter who catches Han Solo? I'll give you guys a multiple choice. A, Jabba, B, Watto, C, Sebulba, or D, Jawas. Wait. Give us again. A, Jabba, uh, B, Watto, C, Sebulba, or D, Jawas. Watto was the person that had Anakin prison, so it wasn't Watto. Okay, um, if if, Jawas if that's the case, if that's the case, it would have to go up to <clears throat> what? Say again. I was mistake. I, wrong multiple choice. Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, like, I was like, wait a out second. Out of all those four, there's only <laughs> one that <laughs> might, be, but through someone else. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, was like, like, wait a second. What happened here? Glasses, so, give me that. Okay, I wear glasses, so let me just bring a little closer. <laughs> Eddie, good thing we did not take a final shot at this. We we were like, you know, you see, like, elimination I, I already here. had an, I already <laughs> had an answer for it. I already had an answer for it. I was like, yeah. okay, if it's gonna be any of those four, it would have to be it would have to be Java, yeah. because the fact that Java basically you know contracted the Boba, uh, contra- contracted the the you said the, it. the bounty. <laughs> you said it. I did that on purpose. I was, okay. <laughs> Okay. Let me give you guys a real one. A. Boba Fett. B. Boss. C. Dangar. Or D. Embo. Zay. Zay. Boba Fett. Eggs. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Next question, Evie. Here's another little Star Wars fit little nugget. Uh, what's it called? So technically, you would never see the face of Boba Fett, right? But actually, there is a scene where you actually see his face. But it's not as a as it's not actually not as Boba Fett. Um, according to the script, they needed more people to play uh, what's it called uh, like the guards. And there's a mm-hmm. scene where one of the guards is grabbing Leia, and is actually acts of the actor who plays Boba Fett. What? Um, I did yeah. not know that. Did they... not know that. Did not know that. I I would have expect huh. his face to come out in, in somewhere else, but not there. I gotta go yeah. back now and watch that. I have to go back and watch that now. For the people who don't know about Star Wars, why couldn't he show his face? Ooh, good question. Why could not Boba Fett show his face? Or Mando for that matter now? Because they are Mandalorians. Mandalorians do not take their helmets. It's part of their creed. Well, I mean, that's kind of changed now after Mando season two yeah but i mean if we go back to the old old mandalorian ways and yeah they can't take out their helmets take off their helmets sorry so it's probably one of the reasons why boba fett had his helmet the whole time um right so yeah that's a good one yeah for people that don't know if you if you see mando because i've had actually i've had people ask me that question you know because mandalorian is such a big hit now and they've asked me how come he never takes his helmet well ugh, spoiler alert he does he does but um you know, it's part of the reason. It's his creed. It's his way. You know, he can't take right. out his helmet. This it's kinda, is the way. It, this is the way. Yeah, it's, it's the bows he's made of not taking off the helmet, um, which he actually does take off his helmet in private where no one can see his face. But, right. you know, to the public, he, sh- he can't show his face. I guess it's kind of a contrast of a, of a hero. You know, most heroes don't want, you know, they all have secret identities in a yeah. way. So that that's a, that's a you know, you compare... Mando, he's a hero, and you know he he doesn't show his face. So yeah. All right, Evie, one more question before we we move on for our to our next uh, question here. 
Okay, here we go. You guys good with numbers? <laughs> Let's go for it. Let's try it out. Let's go. Hopefully you are. Approximately how many languages can C-3PO speak? Oh. Okay. I'm going to take that a shot. That is a very common I have, uh, quote. Oh, man. But. 60,000. Help you guys out or you guys want to go for it? I, I, I got to say 60,000 because he knows a lot. Yeah, I know it's in the thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, helps six. out a little bit. Six or sixty. Okay, give yeah. yeah. We're way off. We're way okay. Go. It's in the millions. So it's sixty. Six million? six million. Oh jeez, it's in the millions. Six six million. Six million oh. language. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I know that's a very. That that was a trivia that I feel like I should have known. I should have known that one. At least I but just he says it. He says so many. Yeah, he says it so yeah. many times. Uh, at least at least I got the six right. <laughs> yeah, you got the six right. I got and just one added question. What's the only language he can't speak? Sith. Or he he can speak, but he can't. Um, he's not programmed to speak it. He's not programmed to speak the Sith. Sith, Sith. language. There you go. Yeah. Which that was a big deal. <laughs> in the last movie i thought it was a big deal yes. for him to break yeah, you know big deal. for them to go to that length right to to make him speak the sith all righty so let's move on with our next topic here and this is a big one so let's see if we can cram it in but what how would you rate the movies from best to worst best to worst uh, and including maybe, all of them so i we could, I mean, you could in include Rogue One and, and the Solo movie, but if you just want to stick to the regular episodes, I mean, you could. Either one. I'll accept either one. Well, we can include them. And if you want, uh, just to not make it long, why don't we just include our top three? Top three? Okay. Top three. Because, uh, yeah, Cause the I, top I can, three. I mean, I can go down the line, not to go super yeah. in depth. I can go down the line. I have I have my list ready. Remember, we have like we have eleven videos, so for us to go down and like <laughs> the top ones, no. Like, why don't we do our top three? Let's do top and, five. Uh, top five. Let's top do top five. five then. All right. Why don't you go first? I'm gonna. Shite let's let's my go head. one by one. So my my top movie has to be Episode Six. Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. That's my number one. What about you, Eddie? Number one is my. First one ever watched Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that's a good one. It's, it's yep. Yeah. Evie? I gotta say, um, The Phantom Menace. Um, oh. I think that's where Anakin did his whole. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she went it rogue. Was because, it was because that was the one I remember the most from a child, not because of the movie. Okay, itself, okay, I'll give you that. Okay. When I so, watched So there's emotional, emotional right. Emotional okay. attachment here. Yeah. Okay. That was okay. the only one that I remember anything from. That's why I say that one. You probably you guys probably have a different, you know, opinion. But if I had to say my favorite one, of course the Force Awakens, because that's when Ray came in. I would have right, I would have accepted the Force Awakens more than <laughs> the Phantom Menace, Evie. <laughs> okay, the first one is because of the emotional, well, not emotional, just like the memories. Because okay. Because that's the okay. first one that emotional like, attachment. Oh my gosh, I did watch this, okay. but I just didn't know what it was. Didn't know what it was. And the Force Awakens, because you know that's when Ray comes in, and I just yeah. I think I think you're gonna be uh, ejected from the the group the friends group chat. Even. The newcomer, so <laughs> yeah. If, if there's things that are from episode one that I w I did enjoy it was basically the introduction of Darth Maul. Yeah, um, that was oh. that was iconic. Yes. Um, yes. It, the things that I can live without is um, Addy. <laughs> Addy. Yes. Like Jar Jar's. Like I when I first watched episode one. I was like we. I was just like you, Evelyn. I was just like you. I enjoyed it. <laughs> then I started like I watched it not too long ago, maybe, and I rewatched it. And I was like, "Wow, his voice is really annoying," <laughs> and uh, oh and uh, and I could not get that out of my head. And so, and you know, a couple of other things. Uh, but yeah, that so that definitely episode one probably would have been my last one. But uh, 
but it, it's still good. Any Star Wars people, listen, any Star Wars is fine. Okay, as long as you're watching them, yeah, I'm just happy. Watch them. Yes, just, just watch. watch. Them. All right, my number two spot. My number two spot has to go to Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back is good. Yeah. Uh, for my number two, I it's a tie, man. It's a tie between two uh, movies. One has a lot more sentimental value. The other one is more because the storyline is so deep. Mm. Um, and I still can't figure it out which one I want. But it's basically one of them is between Return of the Jedi, mm -hmm. which is uh, an amazing uh, conclusion of Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um, but the other one was the newest uh, one of the newest films, Rogue One. Rogue One, I did not see it coming. Yes. Rogue One, I did not see coming as being uh, one of the top ones out there. But there's so much depth into that. Not only that, the famous Darth Vader scene at the end of that movie where they make Darth Vader look super powerful, which uh, I was just so excited to see. So I, I, jaw was dropping when I saw it. But yeah, my number two, it's between those two. Yeah. What about you, Evie? Your number two spot. I would say Rogue One as well. Uh, I remember Heidel telling me, he's like, this is going to be like a complete different like um, movie because it starts somewhere like completely different. Yeah. But I did love it. I loved um, just the action, I think. <laughs> there was just so much going on in that okay, movie. Okay, that movie, that movie completely took you out of the whole Star Wars element. Okay. Yeah. Like, you're expecting to see Jedis when you hear Star Wars, but you didn't need a Jedi for this movie. This was, you know, the characters that they chose, the, the the action that they did. Oh, my gosh. I can't stop talking about this movie. That movie for me is my third spot, Rogue One. Yes. But that's because I have a sentimental value to uh, Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes, Back, em Empire Strikes Back. But my number three spot definitely has to be Rogue One for that, for being so good without having any Jedis till the end where we see – Darth Vader completely maul everyone and destroy everyone and yep. just, you know you just go gun gun gun, <laughs> which if you remember uh, the last episode of Mando season two, yes, it was such a reflection yes. between father and son and I was like I was yep. screaming when I saw that I was like yeah yep. that is so awesome, so Rogue Force One for crush me. and everything Force crush yeah. and everything man that that was so great so that's my my number three spot what about you Eddie. Number three basically would go down to um, basically either the Return of the Jedi because number two and are fighting against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so Return of the Jedi, um, New Hope, New Hope, basically uh, the one that started it all. Um, as you guys know, Star Wars uh, was not called, uh, episode four was not called New Hope until the later series came out. Uh, before the movie came out as Star Wars. Even before that, it was called The Star Wars. The Star Wars, yeah. Um, the Star Wars. And so it was later changed to Star Wars. And then later, when the new episodes came up, they was given a name, Star Wars A New Hope. So, um, so yeah, episode uh, episode four, the classic starting of this whole era of Star Wars was, uh, yeah, definitely either number, it's good, possibly number three or number four, just because number two are tied on Rogue One and uh, Return of the Jedi. What about you, Evie? What's your number three? We're number three, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe my third one. I think my third one would be The Last Jedi. I loved it just because I, that was the only one I ever went to see in theaters. And it was just like a different experience um, mm -hmm. than you know, watching it at home, like on my computer. Um, but I... I really enjoyed it because all the action scenes were on this big screen. Um, and it was just, yeah, just seeing Ray, you know, um, go through her um, whole just progression in her character and then, you know, finding, yeah, at the end who she is, but yet she chooses, you know, to be a Jedi. And yeah. it was just amazing, you know. Um, there's so much more, you know, that I love about all the other movies. Um, but I think just because those were just so much more fresh in my mind as well. Um, when I do just those moments, you know, where she is just kicking some butt, you know, <laughs> it's awesome. Definitely. My number four spot has to go to The Force Awakens. Just because that movie, being a newer movie, was iconic. 
Um, and I, I think you mentioned that earlier, having the female character be the lead role and have that devoted to her, that was awesome, right? So my number four pick is The Force Awakens. Eddie? <sighs> number four, I would have to probably... Uh... Let me see. I probably would have to go towards uh, episode three, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. The reason why I, it was basically the the final confrontation between Anakin and wanted to change uh, to the dark side, and then Obi Wan Kenobi. Like I, again, I said that yeah. mentorship. Uh, it's it's things that I relate to and that I, I, I draw near to. And so that epic final uh, lightsaber fight and then the confrontation, I, I, you are the chosen one, you know, and that scene was so heartfelt. Uh, and then that iconic scene when you see Darth Vader just rise up, you know, from, and uh, that, you know, it, it was those just memorable moments that I, I remember of, of the, that relationship that was just building up to the final climax of that. Evie? Um, well, man, I'm not one for reading movies like this. I think I said those because those are were the ones that, you know, really yeah, like, for sure, um, stood out to me. Um, Wow. I can probably already tell you my uh, my uh, fifth one. While uh, Evelyn, okay. yeah, Good. we'll give her time. You're, yeah, give me let's go with your fifth yeah. one, Eddie. So my fifth one would definitely have to be uh, the Star Wars: the Last Jedi Episode Eight. Um, that one because like you know like what you guys mentioned about Rey, um, yeah. that you know how she was being empowered uh, to become that Jedi. Um, the 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 scenes that we saw with the Princess Leia and the idea that you know it was like oh my gosh this is there not there you know uh, and that that moment where I think for me I think other people didn't like it I really enjoyed it was that moment with Luke Skywalker uh, shows up um, and then Kylo Ren is basically about to strike him down and then uh, what's it called he just standing and then those the big giant uh at 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 just basically just shoot down yeah. and all of a sudden you just see luke going like you know That's like nothing <laughs> i was like what this is so amazing you know uh so yeah all those all those things is just uh, how everything's coming together full circle with the empowerment of women and a luke skywalker also there um is and the new era of these new characters are, are building up you know where han solo luke and and princess leia basically are fading out and then these new characters uh from uh uh we got ray we have um finn and then we have uh what's, what's the other guy's name um po? pop yeah Poe. those guys are the ones entering Poe. they're entering uh into this new era of star wars to become these iconic characters um and it's it's huge because it's literally that's the generation that's going to lead on like i remember you know going a little bit side away from the story when toy story you know when toy story 3 came out um and then you saw at the end of it when andy's basically giving away his toys you know it was a heart from moment because the fact that it was also a generational pass down yeah. of memories to the next generation so like it was no longer andy's toys he was going to college he was going to move already he's grown up now this new girl which you saw in toy story 4 she carrying the new legacy of the storylines mm -hmm. of these toys so the same thing we saw with star wars with these three characters basically passing down the the, the torch to these three new characters for our children and our and to follow and, and and continue with that so yeah that's why that five it's also one of the top ones okay you might you might hate me for this one but um, oh man my five pick has to go to uh the uh episode nine the rise of skywalker just because it's the conclusion to everything and besides uh you know ray being the hero and finding her true power her true power you see palpatine's true power in this movie um, for those that don't know, in the rest of in the other movies, including the, the the originals, 
he was always depicted without giving that. spoilers though without you know he was always, sure. yeah he's, he's always yeah. he was always shown as a decrypt uh you know like this old man who can't do anything and then you know we get here and he's so powerful he was hiding his power for the longest and in this movie you finally see him show his true power like this is the emperor this is the dark this is the sith lord like this is the who's who's of the sith right and he just shows his his complete power um and for ray to overcome that and the biggest message that i like from that movie is i don't care what your past tells you that you're supposed to be you can make your own way and that's what what she yeah. did because she was supposed to be a palpit she is a palpatine she was supposed to be the next sith right but then she's like no i'm gonna create my own way i'm gonna do my own thing and you even see that by her um bearing uh leia's and luke's uh lightsabers and just her having her own lightsaber now and that's like another thing of like hey this is my way now i'm gonna do it my way you can do your own way so it doesn't matter what your past is doesn't matter what you did in 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 the past or what people think you're gonna be because of your past you can create your path and so that's why that has to be my number five okay i see that five so evie did you come up with the last two on Talking about that one, the rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Um, I love to just seeing, I guess, that mentorship from Luke um, to Ray, right? Because she was like trying to figure out, like, who, you know, who she was, and um, just him, like, not giving up on her, even to that moment where she almost threw the lightsaber, like, I think it, it was in the fire, and like he catches that. That was like. Yeah. A moment, like I was like, "Whoa!" I think everybody's like, "Whoa, this is crazy," you know. And then just him catching it was just amazing, you know. Um, so just seeing that, like he did not let her give up, it was just like an amazing moment, I think, for me, you know. Um, and just, just in, you know, me personally, I guess, because I'm one to like give up quickly at times because I'm like, "No, I can't do this," or like, "No, I'm, you know, I'm done with this," or. You know, I don't think I can do this, you know? And just having people around me that will not give up on me and say, no, you can't do this. And, you know, Eddie has, ever since I met him, he's been one of those people. And then when I yes. met Heido, he, he has, you know, been one of those people that's like, no, Eddie, you can do this. Like, you know, don't give up. And he's, you know, just giving, you guys always give me that encouragement. So seeing that, you know, scene um, with Luke and Ray was just, I think one of my favorite scenes. I got to say that one. So kids, go watch Star Wars. It teaches you life lessons. So, oh yeah, go watch definitely. It. <laughs> Alrighty. So, are you ready for some more questions? Some more questions. We're we're almost out of time, but we want to play this game, and then we're gonna end this episode showing some of our uh, Star Wars toys and memorabilia that we might have around. So, um, but before that, let's have. Evie asks us some more questions. Pulling this up. I'm pulling this up. I'm so excited for this question. Let's see. It's, they're supposed to be a little harder now, Eddie. So. Okay, we should. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. To get you guys on your toes. The next question is: Who killed the four Jedi Masters? Saisi, Tin, Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, and Agent. Hopefully I said those right. Sorry if I didn't. Okay, I'll give you guys a little assistance. Repeat the question again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have, yeah, I have an question. answer, but... Yeah. Okay, okay. So the question is, who killed the four Jedi Masters, Saisi, Tin, Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, and Agent Kolar? Darth Sidious. I would say Darth Sidious, yes. And that answer is correct. It is Darth Sidious. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, I I think the the giveaway. If you don't remember the other names or the other characters, the uh, Mace Windu was the giveaway of who killed them. Yeah, know. Mace Windu was the giveaway for me. Yeah. But I mean, technically, he might not be dead. We never saw body. So. Yeah. Talking about this, uh, the Sith. Uh, here's another little plug-in. Darth Maul. Um, in the movie, your favorite movie, Evelyn, uh, Phantom Menace, <laughs> if you pay attention, 
he does not blink once. Whoa. That's one of the facts. He does not blink. One of the reasons why is because those red contacts that he had were very uh, irritating and very, uh, what's it called? He said it, it was hard for him to blink. So throughout the whole film, you will not see him blink. There's only one slight uh, moment where you might see him blink, and it's apparently is right when he uh, gets slashed by Obi-Wan Kenobi in half. And they said there's a moment where you'll see him blink for a second and the camera just cuts off to another scene. But uh, that is one thing that they kind of uh, emphasize in the movie. Darth Maul does not blink. Does not blink. <laughs> I didn't know that. You, ha- you, can't, you can't prepare, Eddie. You did your homework. Yeah. I like that. It's pretty good. All right, Evie, hit us with the next question. <laughs> okay, the next question is uh, what is Toydarian's name who owns Anakin Skywalker. Let me ask it again. Who is the Toydarian's name who owns Anakin Skywalker? Oh, we, we just said it. We just talked about it. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, multiple choice. So I'll, you guys want the multiple choice for that? Yes. Yeah. Which, uh, which I'm pretty much already going to know it right there. Yeah. It's going to be number two. Go ahead. But just say it for the, for the rest. Okay. Uh, Jabba, Wado, Savova or Jawa? It's Watto. Watto. <laughs> yeah, it's Watto. <laughs> it's Watto. It's Watto. All righty, last question. You did mind tricks that work on me, only money. <laughs> All righty, another question. Um, let's see. Ooh. What is the name of Yoda's home? Ooh. Never really great with planet names. Yeah, uh, dang it. There's a lot of them. Do we have a multiple choice for this? Yes, they are. Um, yeah, it's want one. This one doesn't have one, but I'll give it to you guys. Oh. It's just okay, like... Uh, this one of those... I, uh, I, I found some planets right now. Okay. 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 Um, Tatooine. Hoth. Okay. Mustafar or Dagoba. Dagoba. I would say this. Dagobah, wait, wait, wait. I wait. actually would say. Wait. wait I would wait. say hot. Wait. No, I'll stick to mine. I'll, I'll stick to mine. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Say it wait, again. Wait. Say it again. You want me to say the planets yeah. again? Yes, it does the planets again. Tatooine, hot, Mustafar, or Dagoba. Dagoba. Yeah, so we know it's not Tatooine because that's Luke Skywalker's. We know it's not Mustafar. Not Mustafar. Because I bl- that's where uh, Darth, uh, Darth, uh, I just Ooh. said his name. Yeah. Right, that's where. Yeah. Darth Maul. Darth Maul yeah. comes from Mustafar. From Mustafar. Um, has to be Dagoba. And yeah, I'm going to go with that one just to be safe. I should. What is it? Uh, yeah, you sure? Yes. Wait, yeah. You know what? I'm going I'm to roll the dice. Let's go. I'll let's go, go. With, with hot. You're going to go with hot? Dagobara. I okay. go out. All right, let's go. One of us has to be right. See, it's Dagobara. <laughs> that a boy. That a boy. Good. Congratulations. Now, now here's 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 a bonus. Bonus question, guys. Bonus, bonus, question. Facts, bonus question. Bonus question. Let's go. What is- Yoda is actually his last name. What is his first name? Yoda is his last name. Oh. So Yoda is his last name. He actually has a first name. Wow. A lot of people be... don't know. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but his first name is actually Minch. Minch. Minch Yoda. Oh. Minch Yoda. Yes. And now here's another. Familiar. Now here's a little another nugget. In the screenwriting, while, while they're making the whole writing for Yoda, yeah, his original name was not going to be Minch, not even Yoda. He was actually going to be named, get ready, wait for it, Buffy. Buffy. That was they were going to name him Buffy, and That's he was going like... to be a monkey. There were original plans oh, no. for Yoda to become a monkey, a monkey, to be a monkey. I'm glad. So it was going to be Buffy. <laughs> The monkey. Buffy the but monkey. 
I am glad they did not do that. That would have been. Yes. That would have been bad. I would have thought of Buffy the Vampire. I'm sorry. Especially with that... our cancel culture, that would have been really bad. Yoda would have been canceled <laughs> by now. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. This brings us to our last segment, and um, we ran out of time. Sadly, we ran out of time, but I don't want to go away, and I want to end this episode without uh, showing some of our Star Wars toys or memorabilia, what everything you got. So, Eddie, what Star Wars stuff you got around the house, my man? Around the house, I have uh, well, I got a couple. I do got a couple shirts. Um, I got my lightsaber. Like I said earlier, it was custom made. Um, to be able to be programmed for uh, my baby boy's uh, gender reveal. Basically, we had the ultrasound tech. Basically, I taught her how to change the colors. So it goes from all, bun- all the colors are in here, from green, pink, blue, everything red. And so I basically said, all right, you know what the gender is? Program it. And so she programmed it. And so when we had the reveal, it was a nice, bright uh, color blue. So that's how we got that. And then... And then I also have uh, a couple of bobbleheads. I have uh, my little little baby Gro- you know, whatever. Grogu. Um, and then thanks to a lot of my family and friends, uh, a lot of you guys sent out amazing clothing for my baby boy from uh, little uh, baby baby Yoda, baby Grogu, little shirts uh, from Star Wars. Um, it's just I got everything, so I'm so excited to dress him up for Star Wars. And tomorrow he's gonna be dressed up. Uh, what's it called uh, for more stuff? And today he's gonna be enjoying uh, Trilogy Day, watching May the Fourth. Oh look, here it is. <laughs> Ooh. So today oh, we're gonna be is, watching. That. Yeah, yeah that. today we're definitely gonna be watching that the trilogy, watching Star Wars, <clears> and enjoying May the Fourth. And so, yeah, I'm excited for that. Anything you want to share with us, Evie? Anything you got Star Wars related? A newcomer, so I don't have much. Um, the first thing I ever got that was Star Wars, or I actually didn't get it. Um, Kaido got me this shirt. I think he was just very, very excited that I loved um, Star Wars because I, I watched them on, and he's like, "What do you think?" Like. He was like waiting for me and I'm like, dude, I love these movies. Thank you so much. So he sent me out this shirt. Uh, Of course, it's Baby Yoda because right after watching Star Wars, I watched The Mandalorian and I love Baby Yoda. I still call him Baby Yoda. I know his name is Grogu, but I think that's all right. We all still call him Baby Yoda. Baby Buffy. Baby Buffy. And actually, yeah. her shirt was a little hard to find because um, the uh, it had just come out, and there was Disney uh, hadn't licensed any uh, merchandise, yeah. so oh, wow. she got some of the few merchandise that was out there that was hard to find that had a Grogu on it or Baby Yoda at the time. So I got some of his pop toys. I got uh, Darth Vader. And instead of a lightsaber, he has a candy cane because this was a, a Christmas edition. And I got, well, one of my friends got me this for May the 4th, 2020, during the pandemic. But since everything was closed, um, we couldn't get it till like, like I think it was July of last year. So he purchased them uh, at the end of 2019. And then we got it. We were supposed to get it May the 4th. But we ended up getting it like three months after because of the pandemic. Oh, wow. Pandemic didn't let us get Grogu in time. Or and if you see at the time he was still called the child. Um, if yeah. you get any pop toys now, they say Grogu, but at that time he was still called um, the, the child. child. Um, and then uh, I have, and then Evie tried to kidnap this from me, but I actually got a um, a build the bear Grogu. So. Yeah, and he has sounds, so I'll play some of the sounds for y'all. <laughs> it sounds like my baby boy Ezra. <laughs> I'm like, is that you? <laughs> yeah, so that, that that's my Grogu. It sounds adorable. You cannot you cannot have him, Evie. It doesn't matter what you do. And then I got some uh, classic Star Wars comics that are still in 
and plastic because you don't open these. These are these are to keep for a long time and hopefully one day pass yeah. on to my children. <laughs> yeah. And no, I got I got really hats, I got I got shirts too. I mean I got I got a Mando man, I don't can see it, but I got a Mando shirt on right now. I got a, a baby Yoda um hat. Um so yeah, I mean uh Star Wars stuff was all over my house too, so yeah. this is what we No, those for. comics, man. I, I love those comics. What's it called? I you know, a little fun fact. George Lucas, in order to basically advertise Star Wars, um, back in the day, this was like Star Wars came out post Vietnam War, so space stuff was not a big thing. So in order for him to kind of advertise uh, to the crowds about Star Wars, he went to kind of these little uh, comic book uh, expos and everything, and so they they came up with comic books for Star Wars, telling the storylines, mm -hmm. and that's actually was what the crowd that came to watch Star Wars and it became the biggest hit because of these expos, because of these comic books, because of these novels of space and, and uh, what was that called? Sci-fi expo. So um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. So for those who, you know, for those who want to uh, know more about Star Wars, Disney plus has an amazing documentary called uh, the empire. Uh, I believe it's called the empire, something like that. Um, and basically it goes in depth as far as all these things, kind of like what are the things that a couple of things that I said today. Um, but yeah, you learn so much about how, this Star Wars franchise just took off from this one man's vision. So, yeah, um, yeah definitely. Definitely look it up. And um, I, I want to say something super cool about the comics. Um, shout out to my friend Danny because he actually gave me these comics for one of my birthdays in 2019, actually, right before pandemic. So I haven't seen Danny. And I know Danny listens to the podcast. So shout out Danny. And Danny Woo! gave this to me. He was like, hey, he's like, I don't read comics, but I have these lying around the house. So, when he gave it to me, I was like, yo, these are classic uh, Star Wars. What are you doing? Giving this to me. He's like, I don't need them. You can have them. I was like, eh, of course, man. I'll, I'll have them. I was super excited. So, um, yeah, nice. definitely, definitely, definitely get your hands on some comics and get reading on Star Wars. So, um, this brings us to our last moments in the podcast. So, um, I will leave the floor open for you guys. If you guys want to say anything else, you guys want to add anything else. Um, I know we have a couple of upcoming things for Star Wars. We have the Bad Batch coming. We have um, Obi-Wan Kenobi coming next year. So if you guys have any theories, any thoughts, we have Mando coming too. We got Boba Fett, the Book of Boba Fett coming in for Christmas this year. So anything you guys want to add before we leave, the floor is open. Yeah, basically, to anyone who has not watched it, uh, Star Wars, I encourage you guys, believe me, it's, it, it, it definitely a story that uh, anyone can relate to in some way, even though it's all space and stuff, but it, it there's there's always a part of uh, of each and every one of us persons uh, that we can relate to. You, there's something you can always relate to. So um, believe me, I encourage it. This is going to be something that's going to live long for, for forever. And you don't want to miss this. Um, so yeah. Uh, Disney Plus shows all these movies and I'm so excited for it. I'm excited for the future. I'm excited. You know, I was a little skeptical about what Disney was going to do with Star Wars. Um, they uh, actually did an amazing job so far. Um, and everyone has opinions, but they're, they're, they're working with our expectations and they pretty much, they're, they're helping us meet those kind of expectations, especially with Luke Skywalker and Mando. Um, Disney also did an amazing job. Who's, who's, who's living in California or has not gone to Disneyland to check out Galaxy's Edge. Believe me, guys, uh, right before I moved to Texas, me and my wife, we went to Disneyland, we went to Galaxy's Edge, and we saw the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, yeah, Evelyn, Evelyn was there. I would take all in. Uh, I missed it, that invitation. It, just kidding, just kidding. I couldn't it, go. It was amazing. Uh, believe me, I almost wanted to cry because it was like, oh, my God, you just, all these memories of childhood memories just being kind of, relived and, and and be able to be a part of that so uh, it was an amazing so please you guys haven't gone check that out check out the movies check out the comic books uh check out the animated series there's also an animated series out there that even though you think it's probably just for little kids that's really good storylines really good storylines so check out uh the animated series as well um you'll see also ezra come out in rogue uh what's it called star wars um and, and you'll you guys will just enjoy those. Um, think, so, yeah. I think you're going to have to come back, Eddie, for another episode of Star Wars and just talk about the animated Let's, series because that that in its own, it's such a huge deal. 
it's a big yes. thing because we didn't have Star Wars for years. What I think the the prequels mm-hmm. came out. What la- the last movie came out? What two thousand two, two thousand three, something uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. Two thousand six, something like that. I think Revenge of the Sith, the, the Sith came in two thousand six, and mm-hmm. since then the only thing we got was animated series. So that that is such a thing, a huge thing. Uh, so definitely, I, I would love to have you guys back and and talk about the animated series, just about that, because that's a whole world in its own. Um, but yeah. Evie, anything else you want to add before we, we say goodbye? Um, so I guess to the people who haven't watched it, give it a try. You'll love it. You will. Um, there's, you know, so much um, that Star Wars is, you know. It's not just about the fighting. It's not just about the lightsabers or the Jedi. There's so much more to it. Like, we've talked about there's life lessons, you know. And it's just, I think with me, I guess... Um, enjoying it with people getting to talk about it because these are my friends you know and getting just getting to talk um to them with them about star wars is just you know just the cherry on the top i guess um so just yeah give it a try go you know i guess there's gonna be some things you don't understand you know but as you watch it'll just connect you know so you got me and eddie you have questions hit us up there you go (laughs) ask us oh continue watching podcast and you'll learn much more Oh, there's more Star Wars coming, coming, content coming. Um, before I say my last thing, I want to shout out Karen because she actually got me that little, uh, little piece of art right there for my birthday. So thank you, Karen. I know she watches the podcast too, so she's gonna be mad if I didn't uh, shout her out. But thank you, Karen. She hooked it up for my birthday with that, and I was, I think that was one of the best gifts that I got this year for my birthday was that. Um, the last thing I want to say about Star Wars, give it a try. Just give it a try. Give it a try. You, you don't lose anything. You you will learn life lessons. You can get closer to people <laughs> that way. And believe me that um, this whole franchise transcends generations. Like, you know, yeah. the generations from the 70s was one. The generations from the 80s was another. 90s, which uh, that's where Eddie and I fall in, early tw- uh, 2000s. And then now, you know, The Last Jedi and all these other movies that came out like 40 years almost 40 50 years of star wars that connect people and it's one of the greatest franchise and that's why it it will live on forever so with that being said thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the in between podcast go enjoy star wars day go watch some movies but also be kind to one another and find an opportunity to do kindness to others till next time thank you Go, go. May the fourth be with you. Yes, may the fourth be with you. Stay safe, kids.